Hi everyone, this is John Barber again, and I hope you guys are doing the best you can under the confusing and conflicting circumstances we find ourselves living in. For me, I am delighted and happy to be back here once again working on releasing some of Jim Garrison's files, especially this file. Mr. Garrison said the most important witness or person he could find to help get to the bottom of the murder of John F. Kennedy was Richard Case Nagel. Nagel was a self-described double agent, working both for the KGB and the CIA. By the KGB, he said he was assigned to infiltrate an assassination plot in Dallas, which involved Lee Harvey Oswald, and that to save the president's life, to possibly he may have to shoot Oswald. He got almost the same orders from the Central Intelligence Agency, but of course they didn't mention Oswald at all. They were saving him for something else. Well, he did discover the plot, and he notified quickly J. Edgar Hoover at the FBI of the plot involving Oswald and waited for a reply, which he never got. So getting nervous, he calls and contacts his own handler at the CIA. And again, he can't reach him, and there's no response. Knowing how the Central Intelligence Agency was setting up Dallas, he knew there were backup patsies in case it wasn't Oswald, and he didn't want to be one of them. So on September 30th, 1963, he casually drove to Texas, went into an El Paso bank, and calmly fired two shots into the roof and sat down and waited to be arrested. When the cops showed up, they asked him why he did such a foolish thing, and he said, I don't want to be in Dallas the end of November. Of course, at his trial, since it wasn't a bank robbery, he thought the worst that could happen, it would be a minor felony or a misdemeanor, and he may get nine months to a year in prison. Instead, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison in Missouri, a federal penitentiary, to the psychiatric ward. In 1967, from the psychiatric ward, he wrote a letter to Senator Russell and copied it to Robert Kennedy. He said the plot to kill John Kennedy was not hatched or planned by any foreign country. It was hatched and planned right here in the United States. When Jim Garrison met in New York with Richard Case Nagel personally, and then when Nagel was interviewed extensively by a lawyer named William Martin, who was one of Jim Garrison's investigators, at the prison, the information that came out, first of all, was the first plot was planned in Miami, but there was no Lee Oswald to be a patsy. It was here that Nagel first admitted that he was indeed a Marxist-Leninist and that he would be more than happy to be a key witness at the trial of Clay Shaw because he said Clay Shaw was easily guilty and should be convicted. But he would only testify on one condition. Garrison said, what is that? And Nagel said that you charge me with absolutely no crime or no misdemeanor in this case. Of course, Garrison quickly agreed. There are a couple of really interesting sidebar reads in these files. One read is four pages from Richard Popkins. Richard Popkins was one of the very first researchers and writers about the murder of John Kennedy with his book, The Second Oswald. The other interesting read is from a book dealer and a book shop owner in Los Angeles, his name was Dan Morgan. He was a very, very close friend of Richard Nagel's. And he said in the middle of the summer of 1963, for some reason, Nagel unloaded himself on Dan, saying that he had done a lot of horrible things, both for the KGB and the Central Intelligence Agency, and that he was on his way to Dallas. One of the truly sad and heartbreaking things for me, and obviously Mr. Garrison and anybody else 
on his side was the fact that William Martin, the man he thought who was his investigator, who was doing the most interviews with Nagel in prison, turned out to be a CIA asset assigned by that agency along with a half a dozen others to destroy Mr. Garrison's case, which indeed they did. But they have never, ever accomplished destroying that man's truth.